right, guys, welcome back to the Web Security Academy Lab Walkthrough video series. Uh, this is going to be the ninth installment, where today we're going to be listing uh, the database contents of uh, databases that are non-Oracle. Um, so this is going to account for the majority of uh, databases because Oracle is kind of the only exception uh, in the way it's structured. Um, but this is going to be the first lab where I really think that uh, if you're following along, um, that you'll come across that we need to string together a couple SQL injections to get some uh, get some type of feedback. Uh, a lot of the ones prior to this were kind of just, you know, insert this SQL injection and then you get some kind of feedback. This is going to be the first one where you need to build off the information. So um, I definitely suggest that you take your time, follow along, make sure you understand what you're doing, uh, because this is, uh, this is pretty foundational for uh, moving forward from here. So just like always, let's get right into the lab. Um, this SQL injection is going to be in categories parameter again. So what we'll do is make sure that our intercept is on in the burp proxy. I'm going to go back over, grab the pets request, come back over to burp. We will command R, send that to repeater. Uh, control R if you're on Windows, turn the intercept off, and we'll come over to the repeater where we can set up our SQL injection. So just like you guys know, we are going to start with a union select and then we're going to do null double hyphen. So we're going to send that through and we're going to first enumerate the number of columns that we have. So it looks like there might be two. OK, yep, there's two. So now let's test for strings. Let's see if there's a string in the first position. There is cool. Let's try the second position. Whoops. Boom. OK, let's check it out. Cool. Looks like they're both strings. So now that we know that they're both strings, um, what we want to grab now is the name of the tables, because the goal of this um, this lab is to grab the username and password of the administrator. So we're going to assume that there is some database on the back end that's uh, what is storing usernames and passwords for authentication. And what we want to grab is the usernames and passwords from that. But to first do that, um, we need to know what the name of the table is that's storing those. So we kind of already did one of these labs before, but we knew that the name of the table was users. However, uh, in this case, we don't know what that is. So what we can do, let's keep our union select. Um, what we'll do is we'll use a, um, we'll use a keyword, and that is going to be table underscore name. And table name is kind of uh, a, a keyword, just like banner was, or you know, like the v, ver v dollar sign version, at, at version. Um, it, it's very similar to that, except for it just holds the table name. Uh, then we're going to do comma null, because we want that second data type to match uh, any data type that's being queried, even though we know it's a string, but we don't really want anything from it. Then we're going to use a from statement. Then uh, we're going to do another keyword here, and this is going to be information dot or information underscore schema dot tables, and then keep the hyphen hyphen. So information schema is something that comes pretty much default across everything except for uh, Oracle databases. So information schema kind of holds the, the, the layout of the database. Uh, and we want to see what tables are existing within the database that's being used on the back end. So let's go ahead, send this request. And we will show response in the browser, copy, paste, show response. So now we have all of these tables listed. So we want to find, these are the names of the tables that are on the back end. Um, there's a lot, obviously. Uh, so one thing that we can do is we can just control or command F, uh, control F if you're on Windows, and look for users. 
Um, and it looks like our, this is going to be mine. This is not going to be for everybody. However, my table is going to be this specific string. So what you're looking for is a table called users underscore um, some random characters followed by it. And that is kind of, um, that's kind of put in place so that you don't just copy what's on the video. You actually have to do this for yourself. This will be randomized for each instance that's spun up. So let's grab this. Um, I'm going to make note of it. Uh, let's just put it in a new tab just so it's kind of sitting there for a second. Um, but let's go back over to Burp Suite. So now we know the name of the table. And what we can do then is let's rewrite our injection because we don't want to grab the table name anymore. So we're going to keep the union select, but just make a couple uh, alterations. And we'll walk through that process together here. So instead of table name, now that we know the table name, we want to know the column names. So we'll do column name um, and then null. And then after null, we want to do a from except for this time, we're gonna use that information schema. So we'll do from information underscore schema dot columns, columns. And then we're gonna do where, um, we'll do where table name is equal to that table name that we just grabbed. So let's grab our table name, come back over to burp, and insert that table name. So this is getting a little bit long, so let's take a step back and figure out what's going on here. We have the union select, except for this time instead of table name, we have the column name. Uh, second date, second uh, index here uh, for the column that we're retrieving, we're just keeping as null so it matches everything like we have been. Then we're using this information schema, which is kind of a map of all of the uh, tables, uh, except for this time we're going to grab the columns. So this is going to look for columns within the database of all the tables, except for we're narrowing our search with this where. So this would look up all the columns of all the tables, except for we're going to narrow our search here with this where clause, uh, where the table is equal to our users table. We don't want that first thing there. So let's go ahead and send this. We get an OK. We're going to show the response in browser. Copy it, and we will paste this, show our response. So now we know that we have two columns, and you guys can see this right here. So we have a username column, and we have a password column. And just like the last time, uh, these are kind of randomized, so you can't just you know, copy this from the video. Um, but uh, we, now we know the names of the columns. So now that we both know the name of the table and the names of the columns within that table, we can retrieve the contents from that table that's within those columns. So to do that, let's get rid of this for right now. I'm actually going to make note of this again, just so we have it on the off chance that this needs to be redone. Um, let's keep our union select because we're going to want that. Except for this time, we're going to use the names of the columns because now we know the names of the columns. So this is username underscore this set of random characters. Oops. Then we'll do comma. Now we also want the password. So we're going to do password. insert the name of the password, and then from, because we want to select the table that we're selecting from, and that is this users table. So what we can do is select 
from this table and then hyphen or hyphen hyphen to get rid of the rest of the SQL query. So now if we send this through and look at the response in the browser, you guys can also look at the response just in here um, and you can search. I'll show you guys that really quick. So um, if we go back, you could look at the response here. So um, like for example, on the very first one, if you're looking for the users and you don't wanna have to open the response in the browser, you can just search for like the users table here and it'll pull you up right to where that, uh, right to where that is in the response. However, um, just for demonstration purposes, I'm showing the responses in the browser so it's a little bit clearer. So let's copy this and then we should have leaked the administrator and its password. So now we see that the admin administrator and its password have been leaked onto the page here. So let's go ahead and grab this uh, password. Then we'll go to my account. Type in administrator. Mine's right there. We'll paste the password and we will log in here. Once this logs in, you should have the lab solved. Uh, and we should be good to go. So uh, join me back tomorrow. We'll learn how to do the same exact process, but on Oracle databases specifically. All right. Thank you, guys.